The beauty of the Negro Leagues is that they didn't care what color you were, and they didn't care what gender you were. This is a man's world! Tony Stone, the first of three pioneering women to play professional baseball. A woman all day. Tony Stone was a tremendous athlete who started playing professional baseball with the San Francisco Sea Lions, then would join the New Orleans Black Pelicans before making baseball history as a member of the Negro League's Indianapolis Clowns. She would join the Clowns in 1953, second baseman. As a matter of fact, she took the roster place of someone you've likely heard his name before, the legendary Henry M. Y'all crazy football players? Yeah. They just came to the and then in back east, the clown. Indianapolis clowns? Yeah, the Indianapolis clowns. We were playing second base? Second base. Was there a marketing slant to this? Of course it was. But what in business is not about marketing. But it certainly does not diminish the talent that Tony Stone brought to the table. And Tony Stone faced her own challenges playing in the Negro Leagues. Of course, she had to fit in with the fellas. And you had to earn their respect. She swings that wood just as hard as many men. And she was certainly able to do that. As a matter of fact, the more they challenged her, the more aggressively they played trying to prove a point that she didn't belong, the better she responded. The harder they knock me, the harder they kick me, the harder I come back. I guess you could say that Tony Stone's improbable journey into professional baseball had a little divine intervention. Because when she was 10 years old, Tony Stone's parents, who was not exactly happy that she had fallen in love with baseball, and so they brought the priest to sit her down and have a conversation with her. Well, the priest had seen Tony play. And so what did the priest do? He signed her up to play for his baseball team. The rest, of course, is history. I didn't know what to really say to him. In Cooperstown, thank you, mother, thank you, daddy. I don't know why I was thanking them. He was finding so many ways to stay out of this spot. That one is absolutely belted. And it hits the top of the wall. One runs in. And she starts her afternoon off right with a double. Two outs. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. For Tony Stone, there was already immense pressure to go play with the men. But when you step in to try and feel the enormous shoes of a young phenom by the name of Henry Aaron, that pressure is even greater. You see, Henry Aaron had played while briefly with the Indianapolis Clowns and had put on a show for the three months or so that he was with the Clowns. And here comes one Tony Stone to step in and feel his roster place in 1953. Now, you can't feel the shoes of the hat, but Tony Stone rose above it all and played this game tremendously. Among the lead leaders in hitting and stolen bases. Making history as the first woman to play professional baseball. Slicing into right field. Nice grab on the run. Runners tag up from second and third. He'll score on the sack fly. That one ripped. And it one hops the wall. One run across. Now two runs score. And they lead by four. And this is going to be a two out triple. 
the fear that was oftentimes associated with the women playing the game was that they might get overpowered at home plate. But you see, Tony Stone was fearless. So she wasn't worried about getting overpowered. She held her own in the batter's box. But in the field, she was just as adept at playing second base as the fellas was. And she could field her position. Great range, a strong throwing arm that she oftentimes showcased to the delight of fans who field the ballpark to see a woman playing with the fellas. This second base lady is up in the NAL to stay. It's a woman's world. She was a woman in a man's world, but she was up to the task. She told reporters, I'm out here to play the game, and I'm sure I could take the knocks as well as anyone else. Stone fields it. Now a jump throw. And that is the end. Tony Stone in a career that had many highlights would say herself that her greatest accomplishment was getting a hit off of the legendary Leroy Satchel Page. But Tony wasn't alone. A lot of Negro League players would also say their greatest accomplishment was getting a hit off of Leroy Satchel Page because y'all Satchel didn't give up many hits but tony was so proud of the fact that she stood in that batter's box stared down the immortal leroy satchel page and got that hit off of him and it was an amazing moment in an amazing career for the legendary tony stone Swings and blasts one deep to left center. Newman ranging back. And it bangs off the out-of-town scoreboard. Wilson coming home. The relay. Now in time. She's safe as a run score. Tony Stone was a tremendous athlete. She was a multi-sport athlete. She played basketball, she played softball, she played football. And she also ran track. Could run the 100-yard dash in 11 seconds. So yes, she had tremendous athleticism. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of the legendary Henry Aaron, who praised Tony Stone as a good ball player, or her teammate here in Kansas City, Ernie Banks, who could pick it himself, who would say of Tony Stone that she was smooth in the infield. Trying to get up the come down. hit one run is in here's the throw to the plate in there safely it's four zip benjamin back to work she swings and hits a fly ball center field and makes the grab and yeah, there's one away Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. And that one hops the wall. Around third. He'll score easily. It's 5-0. It was left in a small town. Being called tomboy. Well, that must have been hard for you then. I mean, to follow your dream like that. Yes, but I showed it now. Get you one because I got my... In 1953, Tony Stone made history when she became the first woman to play professionally with the men in the Negro Leagues. And while that is certainly a milestone, she opened the door for her fellow Indianapolis Clown colleagues, Connie Morgan and Mamie Peanut Johnson. As young ladies who make their way here to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, many of them softball players, the look of awe that they carry with them when they are introduced to these three pioneering women who played baseball. And they played baseball with the fellas. And every so often, someone will say, well, one day a woman will play in the major leagues or a woman will play professional baseball. And for me, I'm like, no, it won't be one day. 
The question is, when will it happen again? Because it already has happened. What we are doing is fueling dreams. We're fueling the possibilities that come from this incredible story of amazing athletes who overcame the obstacles that were in front of them to go after their dreams. For Tony and Mamie and Connie, it was the dream of playing baseball, and they were able to fulfill that dream. And the Negro Leagues gave them a platform to do just that. This museum, it is also about fueling dreams, hopes, and possibilities. <laughs>